morning you can't tell it rained a little bit over the weekend i was out first thing doing a tad bit of ditching to get some of these small puddles away from the edges of the field wasn't a tremendous amount of rain though only inch to inch and a half depending on the farm so 25 to 38 millimeters for you europeans out there i've already gotten a request for mechanical assistance from my uncle jeff on one of the trucks so we'll talk a little bit more about the rain here in a sec you know it's going to be a fun start to the morning when he says bring the one inch impact you know i've got a lot going on back here in this pickup truck it's one of my many messes so just don't ask about all the stuff here oh geez i should have brought my chainsaw too that was the same tree that shed a limb a couple weeks ago dog did you have something to do with this? You look guilty. Is it the outside one at least? Yeah. Did I it? Got enough blocks on there to get it up high enough. Did it take air? Did you try no. that? No. Okay. Hopefully, I got enough jack. You got a lot of room to work with, don't you? Yes. The bottom one, I'll wheel that thing over. Will it go under it? Chris said to, but I didn't know if it'd go under it. It would if you take off the. It'll go that low. Try running the big jack under there, under the main. See if we can pick them both up. That's a lot of weight, like you said. Or go turn the air on. That's too big. Nope. There and there. Sure doesn't kick out that. So. We'll get it off and then we'll readjust the jack. Just need to put that. Need to turn the air off. Yeah, turn the air off for a sec. Sorry, Chris. There's a lot of pressure on that one. <laughs> All right, turn on. Okay. take a quick break from the action to thank the sponsor of today's video, Rich. If you or a loved one are interested in joining the over 3 million people who have tossed out their antiquated bulky wallets for these new trendy, stylish, streamlined Ridge wallets, now is the time to do so. Through the end of their Father's Day sale, Ridge is offering up to 40% off on certain wallets and key case accessories if you follow my link to ridge.com forward slash atrippyfarmer. I'm not the only one who loves Ridge products because they have over 50,000 five-star reviews. With this unbelievable sale going on right now at ridge.com forward slash atrippyfarmer, there's really no better time to try one of these products out. I've used a Ridge wallet for a long time and I love it. Although I may be a little bit biased, I think you or a loved one would definitely enjoy one yourselves. A huge shout out to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the regularly scheduled programming. Chris and Jeff just took off to town with that tire, headed to Neil Tire, they'll patch it real quick and be headed back out while they do that i'm going to go ahead and see if this emerson 220 air jack is strong enough to pick this rear axle up the trailer is loaded we used our old lever hydraulic jacks they work but they don't really have the largest operating reach so you got to put a block under them if you want them to reach accordingly not to mention the trailer is super heavy right now you know you got every bit of 50,000 pounds of corn on this thing there's a lot of weight to pick up I think this Emerson's only a five or six ton jack, so I guess we'll see how much tonnage is on the rear axle. Looks to me like she's too heavy. Not going up any more than that. That did make this a little easier, so. It didn't really raise the tire a whole lot. It did allow me to lift this bottle jack up a little easier, 
So that is a victory, I'd say. Chris and Jeff just called. They said it's gonna be a little over an hour before that tire makes its way back home to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on doing some ditching. Check this out. This right here is the Climate mobile app. Some of you are familiar with Climate because they offer all sorts of analytical tools. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not a fan of any of their stuff other than this 24 hour rainfall total and their ability to monitor totals with satellite imagery. You can see the majority of our fields are these two pins. Basically 99% of our acres are here on this right pin and this left pin is Tower Hill which is our farm that's way away to the west. I didn't really want to highlight any of our farms. You can see inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches at Tower Hill. But look at the poor folks over here in the Springfield to Taylorville corridor. There's one spot which I believe is Chatham that has almost maxed out the legend for this chart. Over eight inches of rainfall in one night. I can only imagine the ditching you'd have to do after that. Actually, you probably wouldn't have to ditch because all the ditches would have cut themselves. To be completely fair, you never know about some of these satellite rainfall tools. Sometimes they're spot on, other times they're not even close. I've noticed as the years go on, they get better and better. So there's probably a significant amount of rainfall over that way. Maybe not all around there, but in pockets for sure. The unfortunate part about all that rainfall for the people in that Springfield corridor into the southeast is that they're probably in the same exact situation we are. 90 to 95 percent of their crops are out of the ground. This right here is actually one of our later planted fields of corn and it's already knocking on the V2 vegetative growth stage. This stuff's just going to continue to grow exponentially if the sun shines and the temperature stays warm. We didn't get enough water to really slow us down other than a few spots here and there that are perpetually wet. Those people in Springfield are in a much worse position because I'm sure large swaths of their fields are underwater. The duality of the situation is that when you're waiting to plant, you want the sun to shine and you want it to be warm outside to dry your ground out. Once you get a six inch rainfall and your crops are underwater, you actually want it to cool off a little bit and the sun to stop shining. Much like someone trying to hold their breath underwater, a fast heart rate means that you're gonna go through your oxygen in your lungs much quicker, ultimately resulting in suffocation. Same thing happens to our corn and soybeans if they're underwater. If there's a lot of sunlight making its way down to the ground along with warm temperatures to support vegetative growth, the plants will only die quicker because they actually still try to metabolize underwater and essentially they suffocate. At the bare minimum, you are gonna look at some yield loss, though it is very early in the season you can still replant without taking too much of a hit. I've pretty much depicted the complicated nature of farming in a nutshell. You go from maybe taking a rain to complaining about getting too much rain. It's never quite perfect. There's something very satisfying about successfully ditching water out of the field. Look at it go. I know many of you are probably thinking, Andy, you only had an inch and a half of rainfall at most. Why are you out ditching? Well, other than it being too wet to do anything else productive, I can guarantee you that if you have a pond when there's an inch and a half rainfall, you're definitely going to have a pond when there's a five inch rainfall. So you might as well just get it done while your boots are above water as opposed to having to wade out when it's above your boot line, you're getting water in them. I figure you might as well cut the trench while you're not pressed for time as opposed to waiting for when you need that drainage to start as soon as possible. Every little bit of water you get off definitely helps your crop, especially soybeans. They don't seem to do well if they're underwater. Other than the rows being fairly crooked in spots, we've got a lot of really good looking corn right now. Uh, excuse me, sir. You can't park there.
that one was a much more intensive process than I was expecting. A few elbows here and there to get it to grade. Also had to cross the property line. Hope the neighbor to the east doesn't mind. It is my grandpa. And I also cleaned his out, so should be mutually beneficial. Other than the physical labor part of this, it's actually kind of fun ditching. Of course, it's only 75 right now, slight breeze, sun barely poking through. If it was 95 and humid, I may have a little different tune. The way I view it is that the more shoveling I do right now, the less replanting I have to do in a couple of weeks. Soybeans are very sensitive to being below water at this point in their life. They die rather quickly. So get a lot of this off. As long as we don't lose a lot out here, I won't have to replant. Here's an interesting tile issue for you all. Here is that 125 acre field where we put in the new laterals to replace all the worn out stuff last fall. We've got a little bit of water coming across here, which is about the only spot on the farm right now that has standing water other than where it crosses our beloved interstate. Right here on the south end of this farm, there's been a tile hole for a long time. What you can see right here though is that there's actually water exiting the tile and making its way downstream. You can pretty much make the guesstimation that this tile is actually coming from the south somewhere, crossing the highway, and at some point from here on, it's getting some kind of blockage. However, there's enough pressure and water flowing through this tile on the upstream end that as opposed to finding its way here and just plugging, it's actually pushing the water up and out and just running through the top of the field. That just goes to show you how water always finds a way. In hindsight, we knew this hole was here. We probably should have had the tile guy run over here and just hook up a new line right up here to this clay because you'd safely assume that this end of it is good. This end is bad. Now that I think about it, the only thing you don't know about this is the grade and depth of the old tile. It could exist in a deeper location than anything we just laid, meaning that it would be theoretically impossible to hook up to it. You could run a new plastic line all the way up here, and if you were above it, just put an inlet next to it. That way it would press its way to the surface with the head pressure, then just make its way into the inlet of the new plastic tile. This one didn't look as big as it was from the road. Definitely glad I got out here and shoveled that one open. There's a lot of water leaving. At this point, I've done enough of these this morning to know that it is more enjoyable when the sun's behind the clouds and I did not bring enough water with me. There's that new 24 inch tile system. Most of what you see upstream are old clays. There's not a ton of grade on those going into this. So the water doesn't move through this area necessarily fast. We tied in all those southern laterals with the new submain we put in beyond this so it's more downstream you actually won't see that flow going out if i throw a little piece of grass in here you'll see that it kind of sits there for a minute while it decides where it wants to go i would speculate that the pressure coming in on the downstream side from those laterals is enough water that's actually kind of shooting back a little bit which is why this motion occurs there goes that debris to the east which is which way grade goes as i mentioned pretty much all subsurface action today we did not get enough rain to cause a lot of water to pond in one location Obviously we got pockets here and there where either there's a natural low or the planter packed the ground down. Either way, the surface drains really did not get used. For all intents and purposes, that's probably for the best. You install these drains not wanting to use them. They're kind of like an insurance policy. Here's the older twin 24 inch system. This one is 25 or 30 years old. I think it's older than I am. Obviously the one I just showed you was pretty much brand new. That to the south is the sub main that we had to do away with because it was half full of mud. It may have some residual water moving through it, but for the most part, I don't think it'll have a whole lot of anything. I believe this concrete 18 inch or so, maybe 12 inch running to the west is some of the laterals on this big field out here. On the north side, we've got this plastic outlet. It's probably concrete at one point in time that just degraded and got replaced with that. It's actually moving a tremendous amount of water because it is draining all of the big terraces to the north on all that rolling ground there. There's 90 plus acres, four or five terraces, a ton of water that gets caught in there. It finds its way down underground into this junction box. They all pour out and the 24 inch main takes it home. Have you guys gotten tired of looking at drainage systems yet? I've been farming full time for six, seven years now and I still do not get worn out from looking at these. They're just so fascinating. And it's fun knowing that although it was a tremendous amount of financial investment to put them in the ground, they're providing a lot of value on the back end. All of that water is water that is potentially causing harm to our growing crop. It's helping get it away so we can have better yields. Heck, this is darn near a full-time job today. There's another one. Another 
job well done. There's another ditch cut. Starting to get a little bit of washing right there. I dipped this ditch out probably two years ago now. I cut it a little bit too low. I should have put some kind of rock check in the bottom of that. This functions the same as a terrace, except for it doesn't have a tile inlet. It's more of a diversion. It diverts the water to the ditch. Either way, it helps slow the water down off of this hill and off the interstate. One of these days, the corn will get big enough that you can't even notice how crooked that is, or at least that's my hope. They do say you can fit more corn in a crooked row, and if there's any row that's gonna figure that out, it's that one. Here's the outlet in for those two 24 inch mains. They run about a quarter of a mile, a little bit further than that actually. Not a ton of water moving through them. They really won't run close to full unless they're actually taking in a full amount through the surface drain. Those subsurface tiles could not even produce enough water on their worst day to fill these things even half full. Beautiful sight to see, especially when the rain is not severe enough to have it at the top of the drainage ditch, almost touching the bottom of the bridge. You get to sit back, not worry about your crop drowning out all over the place. Enjoy watching those drainage pipes go. I was hoping to run home and grab a water and take a lunch break. I see that the red pickup's back here, so that means that the semi-tire may be here. So I might as well put it on. Exactly what I was afraid of. Looks like I got more work to do before I get to not work for a little bit. And you just let it drop. drop the, just drop it. Don't. That's the easy part. Now you're the next part's getting up. I'm not under very good. Okay, fine. Watch your elbow. It's just my head. A little more? Yeah. Up bottom yeah, side, we'll you know that? that. We'll kind of like that. you did it. Hi, boy. Oh. Bad. Yeah, it's all that sprayer train. It makes the semi tires easy. And you gotta spin it and balance it. We'll spin and balance it on the way to the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to pick it up, but it was enough to cheat it a little bit so I get the bottle farther up. Job's done. Jeff thought his front right steering tire looked a little low, so he's gonna back in and put some air in it. I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat for lunch. After a morning of not being very productive, Jeff's back to hauling corn with a freshly fixed back rear tire. This bin is basically trickling out. He's nearing the end of our second to last bin here at the main farm, the last corn bin. That bin to the north or the left side of the screen here is full of beans. This is a little shivers drying bin. I'm gonna hop out, pop off whatever door bolts they couldn't get loose on their own. And I'll show you why we're down to a trickle and also why this is one of my least favorite bins to empty out. Without looking, I really don't know what size socket I need for this. Probably somewhere between a 20 and a 25. It's almost easier just to bring a handful of sockets as opposed to going back to the truck. for probably 15 years. So this system, although a nice thing to have, is a real pain in the butt when it comes time to clean things out. Because these two screws in the middle prevent you from really being able to put a proper sweep auger in. We basically just let it spin and run around till it's almost all the way down to the floor, and then we get in there and just manually scoop it out. We did replace both screws on the floor last year, two years ago. 
So it does a fairly good job cleaning out. It's just not super fast at doing so. There's that brand new motor we had to put on a couple days ago. Told you it's not moving very fast. That shiver's bin probably requires the most manual labor to properly clean out. No, we do not have a grain back system. We don't have any plans to get one. We've invested way too much money, and I say that with emphasis on power sweeps for our bins. All of these bins with integrated power sweeps, that was very expensive. A lot of them were a little cheaper than they are today to install, but still a financial investment nonetheless that we want to keep using. Yes, a vac would be nice, just not in the cards for us. Besides, who needs a grain vac when you've got a healthy, athletic, 26 year old male like myself to do a lot of shoveling. On the back side of that argument, my dad's going in tomorrow to get one of his shoulders reconstructed rotator cuff surgery, so he's not gonna be helping. Sweeping the corn off the floor in that bin is one of those projects you start tomorrow morning when the sun has not been shining very long, the temperatures have not picked up, and you got a fresh dose of caffeine in your system. The jury's still out on this header cart for our corn head. She doesn't seem to like the weight of the 12 row folder. I think we'll probably be making an upgrade or a transition to something else that can actually handle the weight of this. Like I said though, we've not made a final determination on what we're going to do. Won't be long. I'd say another 7 to 14 days we'll be post-emerge spraying corn. There you have it. I've managed to successfully make the loop around the entirety of our farm. I stopped and ditched a handful of other locations, but wasn't really anything too exciting. The only farm I did not get to look at was Tower Hill, way over to the west which is probably the most pressing farm to look at if you consider the amount of rainfall over that direction. I'll get to it someday soon. I always enjoy driving to the farm from the north because our neighbor up here plants a ton of cover crops on both his corn and soybean ground. On the west side of the road, he's got rye that he no-tilled into it while it was living to plant soybeans, and then he terminated it closely after planting. I really want to try that out because I do think that there's a lot of value in that system if you can make it work. As for cover crops ahead of corn, I'm not exactly sold on that one yet. I think logistically and agronomically, it's a little bit more challenging. There goes Dad, getting one last mow in before the big shoulder surgery tomorrow. I'm not sure that I'm his or even my mom's child. They fight over who gets to mow the yard because they both want to do it. I wish that I lived a little closer so they could fight over who mows my yard because I'm not the biggest fan of that currently. Maybe as I age, I'll become more keen to that. Either way, Dad's going under the knife tomorrow for shoulder one of two. He's planning on doing the second one after harvest. I guess a lifetime of wrangling cattle, farming, and just being in a few bad car accidents catches up to you. For those of you who are curious, here is the 10 day forecast according to the iPhone weather app. Chance of thunderstorms moving into this evening. I don't think we're gonna end up with anything there. Pretty good growing weather. Another round of pop-up thunderstorms Friday through Monday. Overall, I think they're not calling for any more than a half inch. Based on this forecast, it's really hard to have any complaints right now. Let me take that back. It's hard to have any complaints right now if you miss the six to 10 inch rainfalls that some counties next to us got last night. As I always say, I'd rather be lucky than good. And in this instance, we're pretty darn lucky. Our frosted off corn is rejuvenated and off to the races. Some of this is actually already knocking on V3, not just V2. Working on that third set of vegetative leaves. We've actually given Helena the green light to go ahead and start side dressing corn as soon as it dries up because we figure by the time it's dry and they get around to it, it'll be about the perfect stage. I like to get the nitrogen on just in case there's a rain. It can start to kind of incorporate that into the profile more. They do use coulters, so it is kind of getting injected in as opposed to Y drops, which are right on top but still rain is never bad after putting some liquid nitrogen on. As for myself and my spraying misadventures, I would guesstimate that I'm gonna be out here spraying in seven to 10 days. We're looking for soda can size to maybe beer bottle size corn before we go out there, along with dry ground conditions and warm growing weather, because we want our corn plants to be able to metabolize some of those herbicides we're putting on. They're not truly resistant to them. They just have the ability to metabolize out those toxins or chemicals that hurt all the other weeds in the field. I don't wanna preemptively beat a dead horse on either of those topics. So I'm just gonna defer those for now. This is pretty much just a quick little update video. I wanted to let you all know what's going on here. Keep you kind of in the loop as we progress through the growing season. I hate to say this and run the risk of jinxing our progress. Our crops right now look phenomenal. We have just a stellar stand of both corn and soybeans 
one of the best stands I've ever seen in terms of a merge population, and it's only getting better by the day. I'm not trying to rub that in anyone's faces who've had slow planting season, inclement weather, or even natural disasters occur on their farm, but that is what we're seeing on our farm. In my opinion, Mother Nature sure does have a way of keeping everyone even. For every phenomenal year you have, you usually have a train wreck. There is a lot of growing season left, so we can't even begin to speculate where this one will land in that spectrum. Either way, that's going to be it for me. I greatly appreciate every single one of you continuing to tune in and support the channel. Your viewership means the world to me. Catch you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!